Hey guys, MD Gaming here, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over aircraft carriers and how to play them effectively in their intended role, which is support and spotter, not the aggressive players you normally see. You play aggressively, you deep plane. You play them as a support spotter, I guarantee you'll last a lot longer, and you'll place in the top four every single time. So the crucial thing about being a support spotter is to focus on spotting DDs first, destroyers, then cruisers, and then battleships. And I'm going to use the Ryoju to kind of reiterate this due to the aircraft planes having low health but have great torpedoes. I'm going to use Tom and Yamaguchi and it's going to be a torpedo focused using Tanaka along as health pitch for AA damage. And then I'm going to have no fly zone, one way ticket, hidden threat, burn baby burn, and then we are legion. Now I messed up recording so you're going to see me pop right into the game and that's fine because no one really cares about watching the aircraft on the ground but you can see though that I have four aircraft instead of the six and that's because I normally drop two uh, as soon as the game starts because as everyone starts they're all bunched together and so the anti-air is very strong. Um, I also don't use my boost and this allows the separation between the battleships, cruisers, and destroyers since destroyers like to push. So I see the two battleships to the left. I don't want to go that way. I'm not spawning anybody else, so there has to be a destroyer to my right. So I start to turn, and lo and behold, there's the T-61. Now, the great thing about aircraft carriers is that they have the ability to kind of corral and maneuver the enemy if the enemy is trying to pay attention to them. So I'm thinking this T-61, if I put torpedoes to the left, is going to move it to the right. And you should be trying to do this as an aircraft carrier player and trying to get the enemy to go broadside or front-facing. Well, I put him to the left, and I got my buddy shoots him, and so there you go. The T-61 happened to turn into my two torpedoes and got destroyed. Now, I'm moving forward again. Uh, this time, I kind of evaluate the situation. I see those three battleships on my HUD further back and those two destroyers further up, so I don't need to drop those two aircraft because there's going to be a lot, of, a lot less AA at those two destroyers that are further up. So I'm also going to make my aircraft carrier push up because they have that huge island. And you should always be trying to push your aircraft carrier forward in order so the time to kill or time in flight is a lot shorter so you can get more aircraft in the sky. The gate went into smoke, so I was like, all right, you know what, I'm going to go up to the Farragut. The Jaguar is asking for assistance. The Farragut goes into smoke, so I'm going back to the gate because the gate opens up. Now, like I said, I'm trying to basically trying to push these destroyers out of the way, trying to give my guy an advantage. I'm able to spot these to torpedoes so it frees up my destroyer and battleships so they can avoid them a lot quicker. And now I'm going to drop these torpedoes to straddle the destroyer to kind of keep them on a straight path. And that's what you should be doing as an aircraft carrier player is trying to maneuver the enemy in spots that's going to be beneficial to your teammates. So those torpedoes kept the gade going the direction they wanted to go. And got killed by our destroyer so now there are two destroyers down on the right side we got two battleships also and now the farragut on the left side is out so there are three destroyers down and we have pretty good uh setup on this side which allows my aircraft carrier to continue pushing up and use better use, use of the island now we're looking at these destroyers i have five aircrafts i should have dropped at least one pair because it's gonna do a lot of damage um, to my guys, but there's a Mackinson in New Mexico. I always try to prioritize and you as an aircraft carrier player should prioritize lower anti-air enemies and then go up higher because if you focus on the high first, you're going to be deep planed and you're not going to be effective in the late game. Also, you can see I'm trying to drop my torpedoes sooner. This allows me to use that cover on the right side of that mountain. So it kind of negates the New Mexico's AA. And now I'm able to get another shot at the Mackison with two more torpedoes. This is another reason why you're pushing up. As you can see, it's very easy for me to continually push forward with uh, the aircraft in a lot shorter time to get in contact with these battleships, the enemy battleships. I dropped two aircraft because I don't want to lose six to the New Mexico that's further behind. And now I'm just going to keep going broadside to the Mackison. Um, there's two things that can happen. Either the magazine keeps sailing forward, which is beneficial to me, or he turns and goes broadside, and that's beneficial to the battleship that's in the further distance, or my destroyer who's also trying to shoot torpedoes. So I hit him twice. I get a little greedy on this one. 
I'm trying to do more damage. I think I have enough space and my torpedoes hit the mountain. Oh well. Um, I'm super close though. The the carry the battleship is four kilometers away. So as soon as I'm launched, I'm already in attack mode. And so that's what's so efficient about an aircraft carrier player that pushes forward and uses the cover is he's able to be dropping 10,000 damage worth of torpedoes onto an enemy battleship within 10 seconds. So I hit the Magasin again, do 12,000 damage that time, trying to spin around, hopefully get him to sail forward. Um, if not, he's going to go broadside to my battleship in the further distance. And because of that, it allows him to turn around, and I'm hopefully the battleship's going to hit him. As you can see, the battleship hit him a couple times. He's at very low health, and he's on fire. I, I pass off. I don't need him anymore. And there you go. The Fuso just killed the Mackison because he was able to go broadside. Now it's just a team of three on the right side against the New Mexico. And because I'm so close, again, I'm laying down 10,000 damage worth of torpedoes at very quick rapid succession which is very beneficial to, to the team. Uh, and then as soon as I, we clear our side, uh, we'll go work on the A and C side. And that is a very big important thing that everyone uh, that's an aircraft player has to understand is that when you're an aircraft carrier, you need to pick a side, you need to push that side, and you need to focus on that side. A lot of aircraft players that I see, they either go one side or the other, and then they fly their planes to the other side of the map. That really puts a damper on your time to kill um, or in time to target, which then inherently reduces your ability to put a lot of damage uh, downrange as an aircraft carrier. But if you push a specific side and you focus on the side that has the enemies, even if like the New Mexico has a strong AA, we're still doing a lot of damage against him. Whereas if I decided to fly to the other side, it would take 30 seconds to do that less time on target um, and I wouldn't be effective and I wouldn't be placing as much damage down but this way I'm able to spot this New Mexico allow the Fuso to attack from cover allow the destroyer to attack from wherever he's at and then I'm also able to just put down a lot of damage on this New Mexico while my torpedo bombers are able to uh, rejuvenate themselves so set a fire on the New Mexico but this opened up attacks for the Fuso and for the destroyer and as you can see, the New Mexico does down. But this doesn't stop. As you can see, now me as a cr aircraft carrier player, I'm moving my aircraft carrier to a position to better support my left side. Because now the right side is clear. We've secured B. And so now my destroyer and my battleship can both move all the way to the left side to support, if needed, of course. Um, and that's a, that's a big issue that I see with a lot of aircraft carrier players that either play with me or aircraft carriers that and that is either they stay in the back or they stay static now if you're staying in the back right it's just taking forever for your aircraft to get down to attack the enemy um, which is ultimately gonna affect how many how much damage you can do and if you are spotting a destroyer you can probably lose the destroyer because the destroyer is gonna be able to to find a new location to get to before you can get your next units down there. And if you're static, it just allows the enemy a better chance of getting closer to you because cruisers and destroyers are going to push up a little bit and be able to see you, which is going to allow the long range battleships to shoot you from far distances, getting you out of the game and losing a, a huge asset on the board. It's important for you as an aircraft carrier player to push up so you're going to basically assist your team as the support spotter you're supposed to be. But you're not supposed to push up anywhere you want to push up because you can push right into a team that, that's on the strong side. And that's what's so important about a aircraft carrier player to understand is that they need to know where an enemy is at all times. What battleships are where, where there's an overmatch in that upper left hand HUD is going to be able to be able to assist you with figuring out where the best locations are for you to be able to place your aircraft carrier so you can support your team. There's usually always going to be one side that's very effective and strong, one side that's always weak, and you always want to try to go with the strong side. Even if you're pushing from 
the B side all the way to the A side, like across the map, it's very important for you as a player to realize where the strong side or weak side is. If you stray, stay in the weak side, you won't be able to assist your team, but it's worse if you go back uh, into the back or you stay static. You always gotta be moving as an aircraft carrier, find those islands you can get under cover, be in that cover, and so that way you can send as many aircrafts as you want in the sky and then you can get a lot of damage done as you can see just from this one game I have 81,000 about to think be like 93,000 damage um, and it's all thanks to me being behind behind that island and do that rapid succession torpedo kills well we won the game we were victorious uh, I got 93,000 damage out of that and that's because I played a support and spotter role rather than an aggressive role. I only had one kill, but it put me in second place with 19,070 damage or XP. So that just goes to show that if you don't play aggressive, you play a support spotter, that you'll be good. So I appreciate everyone that came out here, watched everyone. Hope you learned something. Uh, please like uh, and subscribe. Set up your notifications so you can see more content. I'll try to post up weekly. If you guys want to see something, let me know. I'll, I'll try to dive deep into it. But I really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much. I love this game. You guys have a good day. All right. See you guys.